Today we're doing a service and uh, possibly a check on the valve body and the solenoids of a 2000 Land Rover Discovery, a TD5, Series 2. And it's got the 4-speed automatic transmission, the ZF4HP24 in it. You can see it there. As usual, we're just going to blow out around the pan. Just make sure it's nice and clean, no loose dirts there when we remove the pan. Now we've blown all around the pan nicely. We're just going to remove the drain plug. These, these transmissions don't have a, a dipstick. And we'll show you later how to fill it. Fillings over here at the front there of the transmission. So we're just going to drain the oil out before we take the pan off. It's pretty dark oil. They take the Dextron 3 or equivalent fluid in there. remember if I mentioned it's a 5mm allen key to remove this and the filler plugs are 8mm allen key. The pan bolts are 10mm. So the oil's drained out. There's only a little bit left in there so we'll just put the plug back in and remove the pan. A little bit of a shock when we remove the pan. You can see how much rubbish is in there. The magnet there is working overtime, so all that fine metal that is not stuck on the magnet will be circulating through the transmission and possibly attracted to the solenoids. It's probably why it's got a, a harsh shift uh, through all the gears. These tra particular transmissions, they have a standard filter and then they have the, the snorkel bolted to the to the filter just so uh, you can full drive with it and suck up the oil from the bottom of the pan. The bolts on the filter and the snorkel are the T, T27 so you just remove those three. There's one on the snorkel and two up here on the end of the filter. Just be careful when you're lowering that filter if the oil's hot, um, a little bit of oil will um, sort of like the, will remain in the filter and it'll, it may just splash down on you when you remove it. Let it drain a little bit there because it is a little bit warm after that road test. See the filter, and I don't know if you can see in there, but, but in here there's quite a bit of fine metal as well. It's possibly passed through, circulated through the rest of the transmission. There's heaps of heaps of fine metal in there. Um, I don't know what he's going to do with this, whether he wants us to um, clean the solenoids up, flush them out and uh, recondition the valve body. Um, anyway, we'll see what the customer says and go from there. Yeah, the owner's reckons he might get rid of the vehicle so he wants us to take the valve body off uh, give it a flush out clean out the or flush out the solenoids if if we can uh, keep the price down to a minimum um, problem is it's got very harsh shifts through through all the gear so I'm suspecting it's a pressure control solenoid now what I've done I've loosened um, the, the bolts with the bigger heads on them, they're the ones that actually drop the valve body. So I've loosened the valve body and left it to drain a little bit. It's cooled down and drained. The, the oil out of the torque converter is just drained out. And now, if I can show you, if you can get a good angle of it, the... Oh, can't really see it. through there, I don't know if you can see that where that K 
cable comes through there's a, a little plug there and that's the plug that goes into the solenoids so you need to actually remove that plug which is a, one of those turning plugs and then I think it's a 30 mil nut you undo it and then it just slides in before you do any of that make sure it's nice and clean around it and uh, then you won't have the trouble of muck falling in there while you're working on it anyway we're going to go ahead and uh, just remove that valve body and see if there's any muck in the valve body okay valve body's out so now we're going to just go and clean it up and and see if we get any improvement now in here you have little little valves in here um, yeah, probably best not to remove them if you don't have to um, they're just held held in there with a little circlip so and you can see where the plug plug hole is where we've taken out that bolt um, that holds the plug in there okay we've got the valve body out and you can see how much muck's in here uh, on the speed sensor there you can see there's quite a bit of fine metal. Um, this particular valve body is what they call the four solenoid valve body. There is a five solenoid valve body as well. So we'll just go ahead and just loosen all the bolts. Just um, You can see I've loosened it all. Um, and, and just let it drain there. Just make a little bit less mess when we pull it apart. Um, it's a little bit intricate, so I'm not going to go through the full full details of doing it um, just make sure you've got a clean work area um, and somewhere where you can actually lay out all the all the little springs and balls and and um, plates and restrictors um, we have a little code that we use to actually scribe these um, codes I don't know if you can see that um, the different codes we use for the different valves pushing up, pushing down, plastic, rubber, steel. Um, valve bodies have become quite complicated in recent years so you need to have some little code like that. Anyway everyone will have their own little idea of how to pull it apart and just make sure you just do one by one and um, lay it out as you pull it out. Um, and when you're taking it apart in half just make sure you're aware that um, the separator plates pushing or holding any springs and valves and um, balls um, so they don't fall out and then you don't know where they are there you go I've loosened them all and I'm just going to let it drain out there um, before I pull it apart. The reason why I try and drain it out is because it, uh, if there are little springs and balls they can become stuck to the wrong spot. When you pull it apart it'll actually pull it out with the part that you know if you want it to stay inside the valve body um, it can stick to the separator plate or whatever so um, that's why I like to sort of try and drain it a little bit um, and you can also see what's going on a little bit easier in those little worm tracks that are in the valve body. People break these clips here when they're removing them. It's quite a mat. There's a little hole there, if you see. It's just a matter of putting a like a pointy scribe in there, and you just lever it out. There we go. Easy. Don't need to break anything. I've got the valve body apart and you can see all the little components there a the little filter there over here you've got the little valve you've got the little restrictor plates and they're also critical some are facing up some are facing down so as you pull it apart just make sure you don't lose any of those and and do it slowly and carefully them out uh, well the solenoids one by one 
we're going to do um, and test them on our little tester here and we test them at about 10.2 volts that's basically what a car battery is flat at instead of 12 volts at 12 volts it'll have more pressure anyway so if it doesn't leak um, or operates correctly at 10.2 volts it should operate perfectly at um, 12 volts or even better Yeah, thoroughly washed and tested. Um, this solenoid's the lockup uh, for the lockup converter. How much rubbish has come out of that solenoid on its own? Now I'm just going through slowly and going one by one. I've done this solenoid here and tested it. I'm cleaning the tray each time I, I do it and you can see how much rubbish is coming out of those solenoids. Um, so that, that's number three, or number three I'm doing now. And there's another one over here. That one will be the pressure control solenoid there. So these, these three will be just on off solenoids. Um, like the torque converter clutch and the two shift solenoids and then you'll have the pressure control solenoid um, I'm also going to go through and just clean out these bores take the valves out as well as these other units this um, center plate here it has doesn't actually have any valves in it um, so I'm just going to wash that off and flush it and put it back together you got to be careful as well there, there are quite a few of these little um, restrictor plugs they've got a tiny little hole through it probably from about 35 to 55 thou depending on, on the location and there's some check balls as well the plastic and rubber check balls can wear out so you, you, um, as you're going along you can uh, measure them as well with a pair of verniers but I'll see if I can find a diagram as well and it'll just help you if you if you do misplace some of these um, plugs or or whatever um, it'll help you just like relocate where they go but I'll find that later always work like um, you don't have any um, manual just go through very carefully and slowly quite often um, the manuals will show something different which will really frustrate you so um, they, they seem to have different different valve bodies for different uh, models and vehicles so just be aware of that when you're doing the work it's all nice and clean it's all been checked the, um, the valves have all been cleaned we use a clean solvent and make sure you blow it out because quite often the, the white metal um, will get stuck on the, on the little valves and on, on the spring you can see how much uh, metal come out of that unit there um, where the two solenoid shift solenoids are these are magnets that we have under, underneath our wash tray um, so now I'm going to clean all that off so we can see how much muck comes out of this other part over here when we where the pressure control solenoid is. You can see how much muck's on the speed sensor as well. So these are a magnetic unit. Um, also shows why you should service them regularly. Um, if you if you leave that fine metal floating around in there that's not captured by the magnet in the pan it'll be captured by the speed sensor or the solenoids all the um, the white metal there that I don't know if it'll focus on that if you can see it from that angle but there's a lot of non-magnetic material um, that's circulated through the filter and and into this um, part here um, so Again, the importance of servicing the transmission regularly.
Now the pressure control solenoid, it, it's not like an on-off solenoid, it's actually controlled by the changes in the amperage or the current. Um, but you can see the little, the little valve in there, it's like on a taper, so that'll actually meter the, the oil flow, so that, that's what controls the pressure in the transmission. That's why it's called a pressure control solenoid. But you can see it if I just, you can see it moving there. Or if I put the power right on, um, leave the power right on, and I can actually make it move by varying the current. And that's actually how they work. I'm just, I'm not t switching it on and off, I'm just, see how, how nice and smoothly it should work. Um, quite often these are working very, very rapidly. Um, I think somewhere I might have read somewhere how many hertz it is, but I can't remember. Um, but anyway, that's how they work. You can see where by adjusting the, the current um, that'll adjust the the position of that valve. So, um, a lot of people just test them with a, with a um, 12 volts but you're supposed to actually test them um, by varying the, the amperage going through it. They're not, a, um, they're not like those other solenoids, these ones over here, they're on off solenoids, they're either opening a port or closing a port completely. Changing right through all the gears properly, um, all the shifts were quite harsh so I'm hoping by just to flushed it out with uh, solvent and air um, it'll improve it. This filter in the end here was completely blocked as well with the white metal so um, there are those larger shinier pieces in there that you can see so um, you just got to make sure that um, when you're cleaning it you're not blowing the rubbish further into the solenoid you're, you're actually blowing it out so um, you've got to find which which direction the oil flow is coming through. In this case it's coming this way through the filter so it doesn't go into the solenoid. Not sure which uh, what valve does what in these. I'm just going through systematically and cleaning each one with uh, clean salt, well first the dirty salt which is in the tray and some clean solvent that we have in our little bottle here and make sure you blow it out with the air because there are little nooks and crannies in there that will hold it and because we've moved it around that can dislodge and uh, cause problems later. So anyway, I'm just going to keep going with that. Um, quite often just washing out the, the little um, where the, the sleeve is where the valve runs um, will dislodge it. I found that this one here, this valve, was stuck in there quite well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of rubber tubing and actually work it through there just make sure it shuttles through nice and freely. I haven't taken this plastic bung off at the end. Um, sometimes these bungs um, adjust so yeah, I don't want to muck around with that. Um, by adjusting that, we we'll put pressure on this spring here and change the, the line pressure. It can cause funny things to happen, so I'm, I'm actually not going to not going to touch it. Just be careful; these things don't fall out as well um, as you're rotating it around and bumping it. And with that rubber tube, and it's quite quite sticky in there, so gonna have to do it with two hands but I'm just gonna work that I'll just put a little rubber tube on the end just so I can shuttle it through through the bore and work it through nicely this is actually a metal a metal valve so they're not anodized like the other ones so these are prone to 
you know, getting little um, burrs on these, or the edges that come off on these. Um, I found that the ones with a nice sharp edge seem to have a cleaning effect as it works through the, through the bore. Yeah, some of the valves in these, this part were sticking as well. Okay, this bit took a bit to do. Um, there was quite a few sticky valves in there. And um, just make sure this little plug here, make sure you, you keep the right one in the right spot. If you have a look, here's a diagram. And it shows that those caps, actually... Oh. In the other way. That one there's got a forty thou or forty thousandths of an inch hole in it and it's facing up as you can see. Cup up, cup up, and that one is cup down so I've actually put them in backwards there you go so one of them will be 55 there this one this one here and that one will be 40 there uh, very difficult to to determine the size um, but you can actually see if you have a look the hole it's a little bit smaller on that one so I've just got to flip them over this one's the cups up this one's the cups down that one has to just slide in like that cup up and the other one the cup down you can see uh, there's a diagram of it uh, you've got that one, if that steps in it like that, uh, the, the highest one is 35 thou with the cup up. The next one along is with the cup up and they're 40 thou and the third one is with the cup down with a 40 thou hole in it as well. It has a check ball which is 175 thou. So I've just rolled it around in my finger and you can see it's a little blue plastic um, check ball and it's, it hasn't worn out, um, 175 thou. Sometimes they'll wear out because they're, they're being pushed up against the separator plate where the little hole is um, through the separator plate and that sharp edge will wear it out or make it out of round. When you're doing this one, just be careful because this, this little valve here, or a little cap, there's a little ball in there, and you can see there's a little a cap with a spring. Um, so just make sure of that. This is probably the, one of the worst valve bodies I've seen. It's ev Nearly every valve has been stuck in it, but there is quite a bit of metal in there. I'm uh, a bit sceptical about how long it's going to last as soon as... Uh, we put it all back together that that uh, metallic material is going to circulate through again and yeah I don't think you'll get a long lasting um, benefit of, of doing this job but he's insisting on uh, just doing this doing the minimum um, we'll probably put a neodymium magnet in it as well just to help um, collect um, all that fine stuff that's floating around in there it may make it last a little bit longer Anyway, we're going to go ahead and just um, clean all these valves up here. Make sure they're shuttling nicely and uh, put it back together. Okay, and the final bit is the where the separator sits. You can see that they've got these little plates, restrictor plates in, in as well. There's a little uh, check ball, another check ball here more restrictor plates there's even a filter in here 
so it all needs to be cleaned and flushed even though there's just no real moving parts in here anyway here's a diagram of it um, you can see I'll just wait for it to focus uh, where it all is in case you misplace any hopefully not and there we go uh, all the valve bodies put back together um, now I've left it all loose it, it's almost all the way down but it's still loose because uh, the bolts that go into the case actually hold a part of these valves so just because the alignment might be out a little bit through the separator plate um, I've left them all loose just so it get, the bolts are easier to put in and then I'll go ahead and tighten them all up when it's up in the case. A little bit tricky to do but it is doable if you just be careful uh, there's a lot of flipping over and holding in place flipping over putting one piece in at a time I'm sure you'll work it out if you go ahead and do it um, it's different when you're watching someone do it or watching it on online and to actually do it but um, it is doable so anyway we'll get keep going there is an o-ring that sits behind this plug so don't forget to put that one back or uh, or replace it even even better and also the manual shaft um, that goes on the selector make sure that's in the right way we've got to make sure that the plug goes through this hole here um, it's actually got a quite a sharp edge on it so when you're pushing the o-ring up to it um, I think the o-ring actually sits on the outside of the edge um, also take the opportunity while the valve body's out um, just to clean the pan rail when you're putting the gasket back in if there's a little a ridge there where the dirt sort of sits it'll um, it won't sit evenly and just take a note of uh, the selector the selector slots over that little pin there back on there's two bolts there just holding it it's still loose um, just make sure the plug's still got the o-ring in there I've uh, put a little bit of petroleum jelly or Vaseline on there just to hold it in place and you can actually push your finger through through that little hole and just hold it while you get the 30 mil nut back on so now I'll go ahead and put all the bolts in um, just loose and then we'll just start um, tightening it up in a in a pattern much like you're uh, doing a head gasket up you can see it right there but the plug when you do the plastic bit up um, you'll tighten it you'll tighten it up and and you'll feel another little click make sure you feel a little click because that's what locks it into place it's just a little step in there when you put it in make sure you tighten them all um, with a tension wrench and just double and triple check all all the bolts make sure that you don't miss any um, it's very important because you saw those um, worm channels there that that it has it's very important that it seals properly um, to get the proper pressures to the proper valves anyway um, hope that's helped somebody along the way um, I'm not going to uh, film the final end of it this video is getting a bit long um, I'll put the filling procedure in another video if you care to have a look at it anyway thanks for watching always forget something when you're putting the new filter on don't forget the the o-rings on the snorkel and the one that goes on the pickup there and we've put an extra magnet in there just to collect any of that rubbish that you saw earlier in the video
just back for a test from a test run it's all operating okay but for how long we don't know anyway thank you for watching